it, everybody. Happy, happy Thursday. How's it going today? Hope you're having a good day out there. This is a quick stock market update show that we do. We call it the Closing Beat. Uh, we're financial advisors here at Jazz Wealth. Just like to keep you guys updated on how things are going so you can keep your dough straight when it comes to your investments. Um, hope you'll check us out at Jazz Wealth. Appreciate all the people that have decided to give us a chance uh, and transfer your accounts. We do IRAs, Roth IRAs, individual accounts, anything long-term investing-wise. We are here to help. We're also playing a game. It's called Guess the Dow. We will announce our winner for Guess the Dow tomorrow. Every Friday, we announce the winner. Uh, bottom right-hand corner of your page, and go to that website. And if you're the closest without going over, all you got to do is guess where you think the Dow is going to close. If you're the closest without going over, just like Price is Right style, uh, we'll send you a $100 gift card. If you're one of our customers, we'll credit your account $100. So uh, can, uh, good luck to all of you that played. Uh, Bill was our winner from this week. His gift card is already in the mail and on the way. Also, if you're one of our customers tonight, uh, we have our class, Wine and Wealth. I'll keep it really short because my wife went out of town and she tells me I have to have dinner with my daughter and her boyfriend and I have to like get to know him and stuff. So I'm going to make dinner and yeah, you can tell I'm really excited. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, I'm not. I, we'll see how it goes. But anyways, it'll be a real short class. We're going to talk about uh, end of uh, year performance statistics based on the performance of the market. We'll also share all of the other years so you can see um, for next year. Maybe you have an idea of how markets tend to perform when they're uh, positive for the uh, all the way up through Thanksgiving and, and so on. And uh, so we'll just cover a quick couple slides. Got a few things left to prepare for that. So we'll make today short as well. Um, and let's get down to the market. So you got the uh, Dow higher by 28, four on the S&P and four on the NASDAQ. Uh, basically kind of a flat day, really kind of quiet. If you look at the S&P 500, you, yesterday we sort of were highlighting that the way the market finished, you need more information. The way the sectors finished, you just need more information. There's nothing that could convince somebody to go all in right now and just invest like crazy till the end of the year. There was also nothing to convince people to sell. And so everybody's still just focused right on that trade deal thing, uh, unfortunately, and that, that's all we have. And we really didn't get anything new in terms of news there. Here's the S&P right back up uh, to about halfway from what it lost over the last couple of days there. Uh, and still, I just I say you need more information. There's just nothing new to do here from a market perspective. Individual stocks, of course, are active, but not much to do there. The Nasdaq's in the same position, and the Dow is also in the same position um, as far as needing more information. That's basically where we land. We might just land there for the rest of the week, which is tomorrow, but we've got jobs numbers coming out tomorrow morning. So there's some uh, opportunity for volatility, but we'll see what happens there. Um, as far as the trade deal goes, we had Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin come out today and said that they had a call with China. Um, all is on schedule and looking good. You had President Trump saying the same thing. Overnight, you had China saying that they are having communications with the U.S. and all looks good. However, they still want us to reduce phase one tariffs uh, or tariffs prior to signing uh, phase one. And Trump said today, uh, we're just not looking at that right now. So kind of pushing back maybe uh, sort of the public negotiations that are going on there. You basically, uh, it's December 5th. So you basically got 10 days until $156 billion in new tariffs go uh, on China or increased tariffs go on China there. And uh, so we'll see. I mean, a lot of people think that they're going to sort of delay the new tariffs as part of uh, the negotiating that they're doing. But China's pushing back saying, we don't want you to just delay tariffs. We want you to start removing tariffs as we agree to phase one. So we're not there yet. You know, there's still a lot in terms of drama that could be... Uh, uh, well, it could play out. So we'll see what happens. Um, okay, a couple things econ-wise, and then we'll go on to our sector breakdown. You had uh, jobless claims come out today. Initial jobless claims, they're reduced, uh, reported every week. Um, quick little spike down there. If we go over to year to date here, we had a recent breakout in that range. We've been just kind of chopping sideways. These are record lows, by the way. So this, these are just tiny little movements in the grand scheme of a really, really tight labor market. But anyways, we broke out there with higher jobless claims a couple weeks ago, and since then have given back all of it. We retreated back into this range. To give you an example, I'll just go as far out as I can here, going all the way back to the 70s. Here are the number of U.S. jobless claims, 213 versus like 256 was expected. Um, you could just see. We're flirting at all-time lows here. It's good news for the unemployment number that comes out. Um, there's no real good correlation there, but people that see a tightening or tight labor market tend to feel like the unemployment numbers and the uh, unemployment rate and everything coming out tomorrow should be pretty favorable. So it could be an uneventful type day. Uh, we'll see, and of course we'll cover it there, uh, but we'll see what happens in that respect. That was really it. We had some import-export numbers come out. We'll cover a little bit of that later, uh, but that, that's pretty much it. So we'll move on to our sector breakdown here, which is going to be rather quick today because sector-wise, 
Um, you've got a lot of confused and choppy areas. If you're really interested in the details, you can see yesterday's closing beat where we went in great detail there. If I go through the ETFs here today, some of them that did well, uh, Home Builders, one of the better performing areas. Uh, which this is also home builders and sort of home suppliers and stuff, the XHB. But uh, looking good today. However, look at this choppy range. Need more information, right? Metals and mining breaking out of a little range there. Looking pretty good. Trying to come out of a downtrend there. Uh, you had gold up a touch today. Not a big deal. Uh, semiconductors a little bit higher today. But look, just stuck here in this range here. I could go through this over and over and over again. Um, the basic materials area of the market just also choppy. You argue still in an uptrend there, but all in all kind of sloppy. Even financial. XLF is a way to look at the big financials there. You're just trading inside of a sloppy range there, so a little bit difficult there. Retail, uh, trying to bounce off the lower end of this range and some moving averages there, but nothing consistent, nothing that anybody can really get excited about. So, you know, you add that to that one. Uh, healthcare, even starting to chop around up here at highs. You have a recipe for indecision, which means you could start seeing things get a little bit quiet going into the holiday season. Um, you also have bonds starting to look a little indecisive as well, which is okay. We've talked about kind of this range, the bonds uh, moving between what's known as an upward uh, resistance area and a lower support area. We're just stuck right in the middle of that. Because of that, you have people on equal sides of the fence. Imagine a tug of war and we have equal strength people on both sides. What you have is almost no match, like nobody's winning. Eventually somebody's going to tire out, but for the moment we have an equal match between the bulls and the bears there. So um, that's pretty much it sector wise. I don't really want to go over this every day when we're kind of saying the same thing, but you get the point with bonds, you get the point with the rest of the individual sectors. So we'll spend a little more time on individual stocks today. Nike was your leader in the Dow today, up 2.2%. Uh, uh, we happen to own this one, so excited to see that one moving back to highs. Higher on an upgrade from Goldman Sachs. They put it on their conviction buy list. They say that they're on the verge of seeing an acceleration in their overall earnings, uh, both here and also in China as well. So they were quite positive on Nike. That one got a good little spike today. Apple, I believe, was the second best performer in the Dow. Uh, up 1.5% on the day. Uh, Citi, uh, they have a buy rating on it. So they didn't upgrade the stock, but they did raise their price target. They put it to $300, $300 from $250. So they currently were uh, bullish on it. They just had to adjust their price target, and so they adjusted it by $50. That stock moving back to highs looking pretty good. Uh, Michaels, uh, one of the weaker ones today, down 15% on the day. That's unfortunate if you own that one because that looks like it's headed towards lows. Uh, they missed on everything, really. Uh, Michaels was uh, missed on earnings by nine cents. Revenues were uh, worse than expected. They guided lower than expected. Uh, just kind of a tough one for them. This, Michaels is like that arts and crafts store if you don't have one by you there. So it's a retailer. Uh, five below. There you go. Five below. Uh, higher today. Added five percent basically on the day. Uh, it did good, right? They're expanding rather quickly. They've got a lot of new stores in there. They also said they're uh, going to test out a ten below. Um, which is sort of tough. That's like the dollar store saying they're going to sell $20 stuff. Um, five below, known for selling stuff under $5. They're going to have a 10 below section, and they're going to test that out, see if people are willing to basically pay $10. I mean, if you ever notice, like everything in that store is essentially $5. So uh, it's these, the little section in the store here for the holidays is very likely going to be $10 price products. So um, all in all, they did good. Uh, earnings were better than expected. They beat by a penny. Uh, revenues as expected. Sales guidance was the only little weak spot there, but uh, they got a little bit of credit because they were, you know, they're expanding so quickly. Sticking with the retailers, Restoration Hardware, Mr. Warren Buffett, loving his new investment there. 13.5% to new highs today. Uh, Restoration Hardware uh, did well. They beat on earnings by a whopping 48 cents, so they really killed it. Maybe Mr. Buffett knew something that the rest of us didn't know. Uh, so $27 gain on Restoration Hardware today. And again, they've said this for like the last three earnings announcements, that these tariffs... Uh, Chinese tariffs will have no impact on their overall sales um, and their overall financial targets because they charge so much. <laughs> so they continue to say that people are willing to spend ridiculous amounts of money for furniture that just looks nicer because it's in a nicer building. I, I don't know. I don't get that store, to be honest. I love their couch, that cloud couch they used to have. But, jeez, uh, I think I said it last time. It was like $14,000 for a couch. Who buys that? How many people are realistically buying that? Let's move on. 
All right, you got um, in our portfolios here today, uh, focusing on the international area, our Chinese-based companies did well today. Uh, Tao Education hit new 52-week highs on there, and then some of the other ones like Alibaba heading back to highs, JD.com looking good as well. So if you're in that China uh, sort of bigger player space, those, a lot of Chinese stocks did quite well today. Uh, UPS uh, had new lows here, dollar, uh, down 1.25%. Looks like it's headed back down to the 200-day moving average, so if you are looking for maybe an entry in this one. Do you feel like you have to jump in now? You kind of see where it bounced before. You feel like you could squeeze out a few more dollars. If you own it, you kind of expect the bleeding to stop around that area. So, I mean, basically choppy here with a really wild and sloppy uptrend. See how it just kind of slowly making new highs and, low, and higher lows, but maybe in a bigger range than you prefer. But nonetheless, UPS Pulled back one and a quarter percent today. Looks as though it's headed towards that 200-day moving average. Limited brands reversing a little bit of what it accomplished yesterday. 3.37 percent to the downside today. This just was interesting to me. I just happened to be looking. Um, there was a, uh, a large call buyer uh, in limited brands there. It was in the December expiration. And uh, I don't have it on my screen. Let me see if I could just change this here real quick. Uh, they were at the December monthly expiration, $20 strike price, 3,200 calls went uh, all through in one shot. So it was one order, somebody buying those uh, calls, which essentially says, if you're following, if you're familiar with options, they're basically saying they expect limited brands to be above $20 in the next 15 days. That's all that's left till expiration. So rather bullish bet on limited brands, rather sizable uh, bullish bet on limited brands. Uh, so that's that one. Where's David? Come on, David. I can't see the chat at the moment, but old David's excited today. He's one of our customers, took a shot on uh, Ulta Salon. They had earnings come out today, or after hours here, did well. Stock trading quite higher, maybe just getting started with what they're doing. Trading around 260 uh, from the 240, uh, 236 close. So the stock's going to open up somewhere around here tomorrow. Now, they still have their conference call. I think it's going on right now, uh, but Ulta did well. They beat on earnings, beat on uh, revenue was basically as expected. Uh, store sales a little bit higher. Remember, last earnings, this big gap down. We talked about it. Go watch the closing beat for that episode there. We were talking about how they, it's a kitchen sink earnings. They just basically threw everything out the window and said, we suck. We're going to fix it. Don't worry about it. But we're just not really doing well right now. And so they threw everything at it, lowered guidance. They just said, expect less out of us. So they only had to beat just a little sort of a lowered bar there. We talked yesterday that they only raised guidance 13% of the time. We wouldn't expect them to raise guidance here today. Essentially, they did not raise guidance. They were basically as expected there. So really, really good uh, gap higher there on Ulta, looking like it's going to open around 260. I don't know if this is going to come up here. Uh, You've got, oh yeah, okay, Viacom. If you happen to own Viacom, now that that deal's done, you've got them trading on the NASDAQ today under uh, two classes of stock. V-I-A-C-A -A is the first one, and V-I-A-C is the main one there, uh, your B-class shares. Uh, they started trading on the NASDAQ today, which is why if you pull up that symbol, it's going to look a little bit funny to you there. As far as the S&P goes, you got 66% uh, of those stocks above the 50-day moving average. It's 0.2% lower than yesterday. That's all that happened. Yesterday we were at actually 65.9. Today we were at 65.7. You round up, you call it 66. I think everybody's happy with that. Almost no change in that respect. So it gives you an idea of how quiet most stocks were today. Uh, you had 12 new 52-week highs today uh, in the list. You've got Campbell Soup, which did poke to new highs, but reverse course. We happen to own this one, so a little bit of profit taking there in the short term, but it did hit new 52-week highs. And I like a lot of stocks and a lot of sectors moving back into the choppy range. It's just moving back into indecision. There was a brief moment of excitement and bullishness, and everybody said, wait a minute, I'm not really sure what's going on here. So right back into an indecision area, just like so many different sectors and stocks out there in the overall market. You had a lot of healthcare names in the mix today. Uh, BM, oops, BMY uh, hit new 52-week highs today. Allergen or Allergan, however you say that. New 52-week highs. Uh, Thermo Fisher, uh, more in the exploratory kind of space there, just barely uh, barely hit new highs. And moving over to biotech, you got Vertex Pharmaceutical, hit 52-week highs as well, and very strong in the short term there. You only had two new lows. The most interesting one was H&R Block, a wild day for that one. It broke down to 52-week lows and essentially closed the day even. It's like nothing happened today after a wild sell-off early in the day. It basically finished the day kind of flat after kind of poking through that support area. Could 
could be that you had a lot of retail stop losses in there because the volume did spike as you broke through those $23 lows. Um, so I'm assuming that's what caused the latter portion of that tail that you see down there. Either way, if you're investing in it or you thought about buying it or you did buy it, it's as if nothing happened today. So <laughs> if you like uh, H&R Block, you basically get a chance again tomorrow to buy it where it is today. I'm not suggesting that, but I'm just letting you know. Uh, big Lots, uh, there you go. Um, so here's the thing, you got Big Lots reporting earnings tomorrow. Um, not expecting much, expecting a 20 cent loss, uh, revenues around 1.1, and um, you know, this one's a tough one here. It had a big gap up in earnings actually the last three quarters. The problem is what happened after it. So if you own Big Lots, the earnings, uh, the performance after reporting earnings was great. Here's a great example, just a real obvious one you can see from March. So a big gap up there, but ever since then, it's pretty much faded away. So that would give you the indication that if for some reason tomorrow they report earnings and there's a big gap up, you'd expect to see selling pressure into it. So be careful there if you're looking around there. I, I don't, I'm not saying like I know what's gonna happen. I'm just saying that, that's what you would think would happen. So that's that one there. Um, what else do we have? Costco reported uh, store sales were a little bit less than expected. Uh, they had some issues with the website, so the stock was lower by 1.15% today. Not too big of a deal. United Airlines getting a new CEO, so that stock moving back down towards the 200-day moving average. I don't think the new guy's like going to be a problem or anything. He's been around, uh, and the, also the CEO, uh, the departing CEO, is going to stay the chairman. So he's he's going to kind of have his eyes over the other guy's shoulder there. So we'll see how how he does there. Uh, Wayfair, uh, ticker symbol W, didn't see a lot of action out of that stock today. They said their sales around this uh, little, you know, holiday Thanksgiving time here were up 36% compared to last year. Uh, the stock basically still sitting at lows. Very tough company there. If you ever study them, I, no, I didn't do a video on that one, but uh, that's, that's an interesting company to study their profit margins and how they really should be doing better, and they're, they're just not there yet. Uh, so that's what it is. Uh, what else do we have for you? That's pretty much all I have. Oh, by the way, uh, the U.S. officially is now a um, net exporter of petroleum for the first time ever in history. Can I show that? Mm, U.S. I can show it. Here we go. Uh, so on the screen here, you can see here are, uh, how far back can we go? This data only goes back to around the 90s, uh, about 91. But if you go back to 1976, when we first start having data for this, the U.S. was always a net uh, or it was always a, a, a net importer of oil. And now we've basically come all the way back down to the flat line. That's this line right here that you see. That's basically zero. We poked through that the other day, and if this would just update, you'd see it poke through there again. We officially export more oil than we import. So give you an idea of how, um, if you ever follow the economy or study the economy, um, the price of oil and the sort of uh, news and everything wrapped around that used to be really sensitive to our overall economy. You notice that's not the case anymore with the price of oil being as weak as it is. It's not really hurting our economy, right? Because we're not relying on it so much. I mean, it's not helping us is how I should have said it, but um, kind of an interesting stat there. So officially at the break even point, a, uh, officially a net exporter of oil there or petroleum in general. Uh, so pretty cool. Keep in mind, you got some changes coming up here uh, today. Was it today? Today was the day. So you got a couple adjustments in the S&P 500. Today, Berkeley took over. The stock was higher by 2.17%. Uh, they took over for uh, Viacom, uh, which was used to be VIA. Now they're trading on the NASDAQ. So that's out of the S&P 500. And uh, Old Dominion. Oh, what is that? I just pressed something. I have no idea what that screen looks like. Uh, Old Dominion Freight Lines, there you go. Uh, they'll be taking over next week for uh, SunTrust. So uh, we covered that a couple times. That stock's a little bit higher here on the day. And now I'll take your questions if you happen to have any, and we'll get out of your way. So I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, lots of big... Oh, cool. You hope Big Lots beats on earnings tomorrow. Yep, I, that, now you know where that stands there. That, that uh, You hope you would expect to see a gap up, but if you do... Uh, you, I mean, you hope it continues uh, to go higher there, but looking back over history there, there you go. There's David. <laughs> He's enjoying that gap higher. I love it, man. Let's hope that conference call goes well and it uh, even continues higher from there. It's just flat, basically, right at 260, uh, almost 260 even. It's been flat there for a while, so good job. Yep. What's the opinion on GEO for the dividend? Well, I mean... How big is the dividend here? Because you see what the stock's doing? I'm sure you see what the stock's doing there, but 
I mean, you like it that's a trading at a discount. I'll give you that. But what are they paying out there? 14%, 14.4%. Oh, pretty cool. Getting good at this. Um, seemingly like they have enough cash to pay that. Uh, yeah, that's a tough one, though. That's... That's a tough one. I, I don't, I'm not going to say what to do with it there. I just think, you know, it, you think it's attractive there. You hope they keep the dividend. Look back over their history and see what they, uh, how often they adjust that. I wonder if they're about to cut that dividend. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, I don't usually cover the biotech stocks. The question is on Sage Therapeutics. Uh, it's unfortunate what happened with them there. Uh, was it phase three of their... Phase three of something didn't go well. Depression treatment, uh, not looking good there for phase three, which is obviously at a point where they've uh, spent a lot of money on this. Uh, that's why I don't mess with these biotechs, down 60% in one day. That's a tough one to look at, man. I hope you don't own it. What will happen with the stock on ex-dividend dates at trading lower or higher? Uh, it's offset by the amount of the dividend. So, for example, what do we have tomorrow? ITT Tech, I think, is the only one. Oh, it's ITT Inc. I thought it was ITT Tech. I used to always say that. Um, so, for example, that'll adjust by 15 cents on the open. Yep. There you go. Cool. Uh, does the closing of AC more help uh, Michaels in the long term? I don't know. I, I don't really study Michaels too much. Um, it's one of those that I, I don't like to, you know, I don't go there. My wife, she'll come to, come to Michael's with me. I, I, I just, not one that I'm interested in studying out too much there. <laughs> My daughter is a different story. Uh, Zoom, Zoom's basically floating near lows here. Not a very attractive position at the moment. But the, so the problem here with this one is the same as a lot of other stocks. You, there's no reason to believe it's headed higher or lower. You'd probably lean a little bit lower because that's the overall trend, but there's just no reason to believe this thing's going to rocket ship higher or lower unless there's some news that comes out that nobody was expecting. Uh, so that's a tough one, uh, Giovanni. I, I would say if you owned it any time within the last couple months, you really, you're sitting there waiting. You don't have a reason to sell. You don't have a reason to add more. Um, it's a tough one. If you, need, if you had owned it earlier or bought it early on the IPO, you got a reason to maybe take some of the loss if you, if you need some capital losses into the end of the year. Uh, but that's a tough one. Yeah. Any thoughts on the bond bubble people were talking about? That's not my focus at the moment. My, my focus is more on that yield curve steepening. I think that's going to be more of the interesting story that um, is not so relevant right now, but is slowly becoming more and more relevant. Um, I think you'll start seeing more studies on that. We did a class for customers on that one to kind of go over if that does continue to steepen, what happens, what's sort of the approach from there and everything. Yeah. All right, a couple more and we'll wrap it up. Uh, is 3M a good value here? Well, okay, so 3M obviously very discounted, but um, you're essentially playing a stock that's going to be wrapped around trade. Got a lot of their uh, income coming from overseas there. So however this trade, go trade war goes, uh, is essentially what you're playing on, which is why you don't see any significant movement in the stock. You see just indecisiveness, um, and that's unfortunate because there's a lot of names like that, that that are at a discount, and you kind of put them on a watch list, you get a little excited about it, but it's hard to, it's kind of hard to dive in and feel comfortable about it. Yep. Any thoughts on FGen? No, I mean, obviously it's been strong here in the short term. You got a little uh, resistance overhead at 48. So anybody that's a technical trader that's looking at that, they're going to notice this prior high here. So uh, from a risk to reward standpoint, I don't know if you own it or whatever, but if you're thinking about diving in, you're asking kind of for a lot of risk for a very tiny reward. So that would bug me a little bit. Yep. He's going to buy yourself a Peloton bike for Christmas. Good luck. I hope you use it more than the first week of January. <laughs> All right, well, we'll wrap it up there. I appreciate it. We'll see you later. If you're one of our customers, we'll see you in the class tonight, 8 o'clock. Grab a drink. Come hang out with me. We'll be a real short one. We'll keep it real simple tonight. And, of course, take your questions until you are satisfied. And uh, thank you so much for watching us, those of you that joined us here today. Enjoy the rest of your day, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Enjoy. Hey, wait. Before you go watch one of our other great videos, have you had a chance to see our new Fin Tips videos? They focus on one topic at a time, covering investing, personal finance, and anything that can quickly help you with your dough. Best of all, we'll keep it real short, because we know time is money.
Why should you choose JazzWealth as your retirement or long-term investing service? Our portfolios are managed by us, not some faceless mutual fund manager. Our private classes will teach you everything about investing and getting your dough straight. Best of all, our fiduciary standard means your best interest comes before ours.